Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers carbocation rearrangements. Carbocation rearrangements are something that we now need to consider. Carbocations sometimes rearrange to become more stable. This can lead to unexpected products. As an example, let's take a look at this dehydration reaction. 2-methyl cyclohexanol reacts with phosphoric acid in an E1 reaction, and alpha and beta positions are shown here. Water is one product of that reaction, along with a product where there's a double bond between the alpha and beta 1 positions, a product where there's a double bond between the alpha and beta 2 positions, but then there's a strange product that turns up that has the double bond in an unexpected spot. This is an odd product. There's no way that the starting carbocation from this particular reaction could generate a double bond in this position. Something strange is going on here, and we'll need to look into carbocation behavior a little more deeply to understand it. One type of reaction that can happen with carbocations is something called a 1-2 hydride shift. This is a reaction that occurs when a hydrogen on a carbon next to the carbocation moves over with its bonding pair of electrons. This must make the carbocation more stable if the reaction is going to happen. Here's an example with a secondary carbocation. So we look at the carbocation carbon and we look next door, and here I'm going to identify a hydrogen that's on the neighboring carbon with a blue highlight. I'll label that carbon 1 and the carbocation 2, and if that group moves with its bonding pair of electrons, as indicated by that curved arrow, the process is called a 1-2 hydride shift, and that produces a new carbocation where now the carbocation is in the 1 position and the hydride is in the 2 position. And that produces a tertiary carbocation which is more stable. So this is a favorable reaction and this is a reaction that's going to happen. The hydride and the cation effectively swap positions in a 1-2 hydride shift. A 1-2 alkyl shift is a very similar kind of reaction. You'll see very similar kinds of characteristics. This occurs when an alkyl group on a carbon next to the carbocation moves over with its bonding pair of electrons. This also must make the carbocation more stable if it's going to happen. Here's a carbocation that's a secondary carbocation. We have a carbocation carbon and next door there's a carbon with groups on. I'm going to highlight one of the groups with a blue highlight. I'll label the carbon with the group as number one, and I'll label the carbocation carbon number two. If that group were to move over with its bonding pair of electrons towards the carbocation, as indicated by the red arrow, this is something called a 1-2 alkyl shift, and the result is a new carbocation where the methyl group and the carbocation carbon have effectively swapped positions. This is now a tertiary carbocation, which is more stable, so this is a reaction that's going to happen it's energetically favorable. The alkyl group and the cation have effectively swapped positions in this reaction, and in addition, this reaction has caused the molecule to undergo a carbon skeleton change. So when these kinds of rearrangements happen, the 1-2 alkyl shifts, you'll notice the carbon skeleton in the product looks different than in the starting material. That's a key that a 1-2 alkyl shift has happened. You'll need to learn to spot carbocation rearrangements. Think about potential rearrangements now in every reaction with a carbocation intermediate. This is E1 and SN1. So every reaction you do from now on need to think about the intermediate carbocation and analyze every group on the carbons next to the carbocation and decide if those groups could move in a 1-2 hydride shift or 1-2 alkyl shift and would that make the carbocation more stable. Only rearrangements with a stability increase will actually occur. Here's an example to illustrate how to go through that analysis. This is a secondary carbocation. I'm going to label the carbon on the left here its groups with blue highlights. If one of these blue groups were to shift over in a 1-2 hydride shift, look at the carbocation that we get in this case. This is a secondary carbocation and it's actually not more stable. Since it doesn't result in a stability increase, this reaction won't happen. Let's consider the methyl group on the next door carbon on the right. If that group were to move over with its bonding pair of electrons to the carbocation, that would give a secondary carbocation, and that's also not more stable. So this is a reaction that also won't happen. There's no stability benefit. Now let's take a look at the hydrogen that's next to the carbocation. If that group were to move over with its bonding pair of electrons in a 1-2 hydride shift, the result would be this structure, which is a tertiary carbocation, and that is more stable. So this is a reaction that's going to happen because it's energetically favorable. On this slide, we'll go through some examples of how to predict carbocation rearrangements. We'll start with this carbocation, which is a secondary carbocation, and I'm going to draw in all of the groups that are on the carbons next to the carbocation just for reference. 
If you think about all of the groups that could potentially move over, there's only one that gives a more stable carbocation, and this results in a 1-2 hydride shift where the neighboring hydrogen moves over with its bonding pair of electrons. The new carbocation is tertiary and more stable. If we look at another example here, we've got a secondary carbocation that has adjacent methyl groups and hydrogens. And in this case, it's a methyl group moving over that gives a more stable carbocation. If one of these groups were to move over with its bonding pair of electrons, the result is a new carbocation that's tertiary and more stable. Here's an example with a primary carbocation. On the neighboring carbon, there's a hydrogen, and that hydrogen could move over in a 1-2 hydride shift. And that would result in a more stable carbocation where the cation's in a tertiary position. The tertiary carbocation's more stable. Here's another example with a secondary carbocation. If I draw in the neighboring groups and we look at what can move, a 1-2 hydride shift could occur with one of the lower hydrogens moving because that gives a new carbocation which, although it's still secondary, is resonance stabilized and significantly more stable. Now we're able to go back and take a look at the original question of the dehydration experiment that gave the strange product. We've got our 2-methyl cyclohexanol that, in the presence of phosphoric acid, gets protonated and undergoes an E1 elimination reaction. Protonation of the OH group results in a carbocation forming, which is a secondary carbocation. This carbocation could get deprotonated in either one of its two beta positions to give the two possible alkene products. But now we can take a look and try to analyze it for potential rearrangements. And if you look here, this hydrogen could potentially move over in a 1-2 hydride shift, which would result in a new carbocation that's tertiary and therefore more stable. Now this new carbocation has a new beta position the methyl protons are now adjacent to the carbocation and the weak base could deprotonate one of those protons and that would explain the new product that is observed. So carbocation rearrangements are a new thing. You have to take a look at them anytime you have a reaction that involves a carbocation. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.